Hello and welcome to this Construct 3 demonstration on dynamic waypoints. Um, you just saw the uh, the app in action, the game in action. Let me just show you that again. So the uh, orange blocks are like players with a score on top of them and they are moving towards that destination point here. Um, they do that using a pathfinding but whenever they find some loot, which is these little orange, uh, these little purple blocks, uh, rather, uh, they interrupt their pathfinding behavior and they will pathfind to the loot and then go on to the endpoint. And it does that every time it finds some loot on its way. Um, so that's what I mean with dynamic waypoints. It starts off going to the end point here to the destination but once it finds something on its way it adds that as a sort of a waypoint going out of its way to take up the loot and then going back on its way to go to the destination so um, how does it work so here's the layout uh, this is some arbitrary layout uh, I've just added some players add some arbitrary place, add some loot, add some arbitrary places. And also the, the, the boundaries which have been set to solid of course because the pathfinding behavior will uh, take into account the solids. Um, and this one also here, the destination, it's put here in the top right corner but you can put it anywhere. It's the principle that is really uh, acting here. So if we go to the player we see that he's got an instance variable called a score um, and that's actually just the score that's being updated all of the time and this happens actually and this is one of the, the clues of the, the game here um, the, there's a container so the player is a container of uh, two other things being the score label which you can't see here at this moment because it is present at a different layout here it's, uh, this is the score label the score label has the pin behavior uh, because at runtime we're going to pin that score label to the player itself and the second thing which is in the container of the player is a stack and a stack is actually an array you can see that here in the object types um, but why do I call it a stack? Actually a stack is like the reverse of a queue. Uh, if you stand in a queue in the shop for example, the first one coming out of the queue is the first one that entered. It's the principle of a queue. A stack is the other way around. Uh, the first one that uh, enters the stack is the last one to uh, exit the stack. So it's like a deck of cards. You put one card on top of the other and once you get cards off of the stack again, it's the last card that you've pick off the stack the first one so that's that's principle of a stack and this is a good example of how a stack should work and I'll come back to that when I review the code so please remember that this uh, stack is part of the container of the player and this is very handy because that means that whenever that player gets instantiated at runtime or just when the game starts um, it will get its own stack. Whenever you do something with the player, you pick the player or have a player in the context and your event sheet, the stack will also be in its context. It will be created automatically along with the player and it will be destroyed along with the player. So that's very, very handy. Um, all right. And then there's two behaviors uh, attached to the player, of course, uh, the pathfinding which settings I've tweaked a little bit to uh, get along with the, the layout here I uh, don't uh, go overlapping the uh, the solids here for example uh, the speed and stuff like that I've, I've, I've just adapted it a little bit and also the line of sight which has a code of view of 360 degrees but only a range of 100 why such a small range? Because I don't want, for example, this one to immediately uh, get this loot in a line of sight, for example. It's only got a limited range of 100 pixels. So that's for the layout. How does the event sheet actually work? Well, on start of layout, we start off by clearing the stack. We're setting the stack to 0, 1, 1, which means 0 width, 1 height, 1 depth. And we push the first destination to the stack by adding the X and Y coordinates separated by a semicolon. So we do that here, push 
uh, destination x semicolon destination y on the x-axis so the first thing we do here is we find the uh, path to the stack.front here we see the stack.front the stack.front is just a shortcut to the very first item at the uh, in the stack and this is just what we do here and in fact the fact that we use push front here is actually making it a stack we could also do push back but that would make it a queue a queue is where everything new uh, is added to the back of the line like you're in a supermarket you don't go skipping um, and a stack is when everything is added in front of uh, the items that are already in the stack so we find that destination because why we added um, the destination with a semicolon separation here we can do use the token at functionality I've got a separate video on that on the YouTube channel where you can see token parsing at work so that works here uh, by splitting that uh, that string uh, pushed on top of the um, stack here uh, into two parts separated by semicolon and then what we do is we pick the label it's in the same container as the player it's instantiated along with the player uh, so we pick it um, immediately and we pin it to the player so every score label is pinned to its, uh, its respective player actually that's what happens here and it's moved to the top of the layer so the label appears in front of the player and it's visible of course so then then some standard stuff here on pathfinding path finding path found here uh, we move along the path the player moves along the path um, and this is actually and the essence of the game here here we're going to go and for each player whenever the player has a line of sight of loot within that 100 pixel range and the loot has not been noticed yet so we didn't mention that yet but loot has an instance variable called noticed and once a player notices it this flag becomes one instead of zero um, and by doing that that ensures that another player doesn't notice this loot and doesn't go and search for the loot as well because that would hang that player because it never arrives at its destination because it sees it and then some other player picks it up and then it's gone so that's how we fix that so um, not noticed yet then we stop the player in its tracks it will stop uh, following along the path a finding path um, and then we push the loot x and y coordinates to the uh, to the front of the stack and then we find again the the path to the front of the stack so at that time for example when a player starts and he finds its first loot after this statement push front here there are two items in its stack being the destination which will never was never popped out of the stack and uh, this new loot here um, and then what happens is on a collision with with the loot what we do is we destroy the loot and we uh, add one to the score and we set the text to the score of course and then this is where the magic happens on path funding arrived we're going to pop the front of the x-axis so we're going to take one item off of the stack and leave the items that are on the stack already the other items we're gonna leave them there so in the example of just a minute ago where the player finds its first loot it's going to push the uh, destination into the stack it's going to push the loot into the stack and once it pathfinding arrived uh, event triggers it means it's arrived at the first loot it's going to pop out the loot coordinates and it's going to be left with the destination coordinates and then it says okay once if it's not empty then we go and find the path to that what's currently at the front of the stack which is the thing that's left and that's the destination coordinate so it just goes on its way and goes to the destination unless he of course finds another loot using the line of sight behavior here so that's how it works uh, i hope you learned a lot uh, as always please like and subscribe and i will leave a link in the description where you can get the free template for um, this code 
Thank you for watching.